take some of the ones that you give, you know, that's Big Ten football the whole way around. We're not the same pushover team that, you know, you used to want to invite for your homecoming. It's like you out there with grown men. We are and always will be on this day. So we're at halftime, 14 to 10 our score, and the Nittany Lions lead this football game. Look at Ted Ginn tonight, zero touches receiving. That was his second touch carrying the football. Don't try too hard, though, to get him the football. You do have some other weapons on that offense. You can win it without him touching the ball. Second and nine, quick pass to the near sideline. Got that one. Our situation, a big third down for Ohio State. The Buckeyes trailing by seven, 17 to 10. They need to take the ball to the 46-yard line of the Lions. Flag goes down, and the snap goes beyond the quarterback, Smith. And now this is going to be an interesting call. The defensive end on the top of your screen had jumped off sides. But he is pointing at the tackle, saying he had moved. Yeah, he could. Offside defense, defense, number 55. Five yards in the previous spot. Another result in the first half. See, that's Matthew Rice and Joe saying the same thing, that the man did move. Watch the lineman. Well, I think Joe was right. Huge first down for Ohio State. They have it at the 44. Penn State shows blitz. They come off the right corner. And inside in that uh, tackle play, there's not didn't see a Buckeye move. Looked to me like uh, it, was a, it was a good call. Now, this time, situation is different. Everybody's pointing at uh, Dadish, and he did move. Ball start, offense, number 50. Five yards, the ball remains second. So now the crowd's happy. It is Happy Valley again. <laughs> the right offensive tackle did jump. Two tight ends in the ball game for Ohio State. Well, this crowd is really making some noise now. Smith. Going to go long, and he's got a man at the five-yard line, and it's overthrown, and that is Antonio Holmes, who had... So now completed. it is third down. They thought they need to take it down to the 34-yard line if they're going to keep this drive going, and obviously they are out of field goal range. The ball just resting inside the 50-yard line. Again, the crowd trying to influence what Ohio State is able to do. Smith drops three-step drop got it incomplete ball is tipped by one of the linebackers and then the collision so although the receiver is uh, gritching a little bit I don't think it matters with the ball having been tipped and they tried to go to Roy Hall number eight Penn State in three deep coverage there's going to be a safety right in the middle of the field and Calvin Lowry playing center field almost picked that one as Troy Smith just trying to make a play throw at the big Roy Hall AJ Trapasso uh, in to kick Richard Freshman. And you see Calvin Lowry back in a deep single safety. Spiral uh, kick, not going to turn over. Calls your offense out of sync by trying too hard. You got a bunch of other weapons out there starting with San Antonio Holmes. Straight ahead with the running play. Pittman is going to be just mugged by Puzlesny, and they're not going to have the first down. It'll be third down. Back in high school himself. Well, here's a comparison. Carpenter Hawk and Sligel with 11 tackles. Puzlesny alone with 11 tackles. Here's the situation. Third down. A yard and a half is what they need. And from the shotgun here, Smith. Option play. He'll turn it up, and he will have the first down. He tackled. Second down, eight yards to go. They need to take it to the 25. Smith sets deep in the pocket. Protection breaks down. He's just going to throw this one away. Just seen it on this drive. Well, a lot of coaches say that that window becomes larger for quarterbacks, and that's what's happening for him. That pass should have been caught by Handy, and it'll go incomplete right off his fingertips. And he had a teammate diving for it down the field, but he couldn't make the stab either. And I'll tell you, a distance field goal job. It's going to be up 50 yards. 
Keep your eye on Scott Paxson, number 41. John here. Josh Houston, his longest. Bob was 47 yards against Iowa. Here's the kick, and he's got plenty of distance on this one, and he is no good. Wide right. And plenty of distance, and missed it to the right. Our score remains. Penn State by seven. Smith. Boy, he is uh, with a determined run right there. Close. From the shotgun, here's the option. He pitches it back to Pittman. Boy, nice job defensively, and they're going to knock him down. Rebuild this Penn State defense. He was hilarious. When we talked to him yesterday. He said, you give a lot of suggestions to Joe, and he said, yes. We said, our are many of them taken and used? He said, no. He said, Joe lets you know whether he's going to use something or not. Snitker into the backfield. That ball thrown way too hard at close range to Holmes. He didn't have a prayer of catching that one. And Troy Smith. Bye bye. 2001. Joe Paterno looking for number 324 career victory against Ohio State. Freshman Zach Mills led Penn State back from a 27 to 9 deficit rushing and passing for a total of 418 and three touchdowns but it all came down to a blocked field goal attempt giving the Nittany Lions a 29 27 win and Joe Pa got victory number 324 and at the time just surpassing Bear Bryant Hit just as he recocked the ball by Jay Alford and Troy Smith. Very, very fortunate, Bob, not to have turned over the football. And Jay Alford wears number 13. He was a quarterback in high school. And fortunate, you are right, that he did not cough up that football. But that's a big old high school quarterback right there wearing number 13. You know, and I, I read someplace that his number up until last year was 87, but he wanted to change it this year. You see the whiteout if you just joined us. That's 20,000 students who are wearing white T-shirts tonight, and the theme is white out the Buckeyes. Second down and 17. Smith drills the ball, has it complete again, tries to take it back into a not pursuing Penn State defenders. No sense in gambling on a guy that could run right by you and cost you seven points. And you're right, he did an outstanding job. Third down, they need to take it out to the 44-yard line. Pressure coming off the corner, going to run it. 35 at the 40. In fact, he will not get the 40. Dan Connor is there to make the tackle, and Ohio State will have to punt the football back. And these two defenses have just taken over this football game. Which defense can force the turnover? Because I don't think either offense can go the length of the field line. But these defensive teams right now dominating this football game. Yeah, if you like good defense, this is a fun one for you. A.J. Trapasso to kick it away. Good long spiral. Lowry's going to not be able to take this one. And in fact, I don't know the win. Now that is... Uh, as the game day crew today forecasted a typical Pac-10 shootout. <laughs> That's a long way from right here because oh. those points are scarce with these two defenses tonight. Penn State leads it by seven. You see how much time we have left of the ball game, under six and a half. And Smith has to tuck the ball. Michael Robinson over there looking for some suggestions on what do we do if we get that ball back with your Penn State's offense. Crowd trying to help out the shotgun second down they need to take it to the 42 here comes pressure ball is held on to now trying to run away and he's set at the 25 by guess who Paul Puzlesny he has been everywhere and done a little bit of everything tonight Ron Franklin along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe coming to you from a record-setting crowd here in the State College Pennsylvania Beaver Stadium Clock runs. We're about to see five minutes showing on the clock, and it's third down Ohio State. And as we had just mentioned, this ball needs to be taken out to the 42-yard line, or they're going to have to punt it back to the Nittany Lions. Wow. Rolls the pocket, now drills it, and it is incomplete. Ginn could not hold on. Phillips 
was there to put the lumber on him. Anwar Phillips put a lick on Ted Ginn right now, right there. And Penn State's offense, well, a chance to get this football back right now. And use clock and also control field position. But a big play by Paul Pazluzny on that second down sack. That was huge. kick this one's not even close to a spiral and I'm out they might be coming after the punter they are going to come after this and Roy Hall number eight a wide receiver lined up inside on this punt block team well here's the boot and it's it's a line drive and fair catch was called for and it got by look at this arrow right here the ball is going to be touched in at the 11 yard line 54 yards in the kick and in either misjudged it or simply right there and the white out crowd is right in the face of this Ohio State offense right now. So let's see what the Buckeyes can come up with offensively. They've got three minutes and 37 seconds to work with. They're down a touchdown and they are about to scrimmage 89 yards away. And you have the true freshman corner. Justin King in the football game. Troy Smith from the shotgun steps up. Here come flags all over the place. This is going to be offensive holding. During the play, holding. Offense number 25. Half the distance to the goal line. Repeat first down. Well, Antonio Pittman is the man who is flagged. Right here, we see Tom Bahali at the top. Right there. I mean, that's just a flat takedown. Tough assignment, though. Yes. Sliding that protection and putting Antonio Pittman on Tom Bahali. The best defensive lineman. So look at this new setting right here. This is the worst field position that Ohio State has had the entire evening as they go for their own five and a half yard line. It's Ted Ginn in motion to the bottom of your screen. Smith steps up, gonna have to be careful here. Is hit from behind and tackled for a half yard loss by Tumba Holly. Tumba Holly and also Jay Alford, number 13. Great job by Troy Smith of just staying alive. Also holding on to the football. Boy, that student section now is really up and making a gigantic amount of noise. You see the sea of white, the whiteout. Well, they are two minutes and 28 seconds away from the whiteout of the Buckeyes here tonight. Anthony Gonzalez in motion to the top of your screen, and now a timeout is called by Troy Smith. Talented football teams, but just on a national level, these both these teams can compete nationally with anyone. So if you just joined us, the situation, it is going to be second down, and Ohio State scrimmaging from their own five-yard line. And listen to the noise with that student section right behind the offense. They're going to take it out to the 21-yard line to pick up the first down. Smith from the shotgun drops back into his own end zone. Here comes pressure now, and he steps up and drills it. It is complete to Ginn at the 27, and he's going to have the first down. What a gigantic play, faithful. Now they go from their own 31. Drops back to throw again. Looking, going over the middle, got it complete, and that's Antonio Holmes and two of his biggest weapons. Two plays. Yep. Clock is running. 135 left. Throws it out in the flat. That is Roy Hall. And Hall gets out of bounds to stop the clock at the 45-yard line. Key, key. Stoppage of the clock. Plenty of time left on the play clock. You see, they still got 10 seconds to snap it. Gonzalez in motion. Here comes pressure. Smith is hit and sacked. The ball is loose, and it's recovered by Ohio State. Tom Bahali with the hit.
but they kept the tight end in to get maximum protection. But Tomba Holly comes up with a huge, huge sack. Look at that sideline. And then all of a sudden, the signs in the stand, we are back. The play is being reviewed. Ball was fumbled. Recovered by Penn State. First down. And you talk about all that speed. Penn State recruited and all those freshman receivers. But this game came down to that Penn State defense. No and that's been the constant over the last several years. 121 remaining. Michael Robinson will take a knee. Ohio State has just taken their final timeout. That's the last time they can start the clock or stop the clock, I should say. And that's an image that the Nittany Lion faithful will hold in their minds for some time. That is a great Polaroid image. I don't even know if I can do this, but I'm going to put my vote for Tom Bahali on that sack on Troy Smith. Can we have another Polaroid image? This defense deserves some kind of image tonight, doesn't it? Uh, I'll tell you, between, between uh, Tom Bahali and, and uh, Kozlesny, wow. And they're not the only ones. The young man who made the recovery. You know, he has been all over the place tonight as well. He'll take a knee now. And as we mentioned, Ohio State can no longer stop the clock. And now things get a little chippy here at the end. And you see that the uh, cooler heads prevailing. And what they're saying is, and hey, Levi Brown, you know, we're about to win this football game. We certainly don't need to do anything foolish right now. And you talk about big wins. Let's go back three weeks ago to Northwestern in Evanston. Penn State with a fourth and 15. They convert, go on and win that football game. Now they're 6 0 heading to Ann Arbor next week. Clock is down to 36, 35. They snap it, and he will take a knee. And now we look to see game clock and play clock. They don't have to run another play. Play clock has not started, and the celebration is beginning down on the field. What a scene. The Nittley Lions with their celebration and some of the cheering squad coming on the field and police very quickly getting out to say, hey, we can't have all 108,000 out here on the field right now. The clock has run out. Lots of congratulations going around. Michael Robinson. And let's go down to the field in Holly Rowe with a victorious head coach, Joe Pye. Coach Paterno, what does it mean for this team and for you to be 6-0? Oh? Any time you're 6-0, oh, it's good. No, I, no we, have a, we have a good football team. We play Ohio State. I thought there were two real good football teams out there today. You know, we just had to get that one more score. Joe to go have a glass of wine and enjoy this one. He is 6-0. Oh. He's the favorite going into Ann Arbor next week. And Penn State now 